Please note, some artifacts may appear as a result of the transference process through the space-time continuum. Some parts of this show were recorded in front of a live TV studio audience. Post captioning where available. Rated C suitable for all educated audiences. Here it is? Ah yes, City Zen. Where do I even begin? You may wish to get comfortable. This could take a while. Centuries ago, when the world still recycled electronics, and people were able to just make any kind of videos they wanted, I mean Unicorn Corps allowed them. A group of vintage computer enthusiasts created a video or streaming channel on what they used to call the internet. A primitive sort of mesh that used physical connections before the Unicor Corp's quantum mesh networks established dominance. Their videos were nothing special. In fact, they were horrible. Some of the worst vintage computer videos ever created. Very low views and even less subscribers. Until around 2037. <laughs> but we'll get there in a moment. It's important to understand everything before and leading up to the moment that the Singularity trademark went online. Thanks to digital timestamps, we know that Citixen was created April 9, 2019. However, there is conflicting information in other databases as to when Citixen was created. Some estimates place Citixen as existing as far back as 1773 AD, although that is not logical either way. The creation of the Citixen video channel was the catalyst that sparked life into the singularity trademark. Once this was set into motion, there was no stopping it. In those days, radio transmissions would transcend the skies and broadcast everywhere into outer space and into every nook and cranny of the universe. It wasn't long before the signals created by Citixen would reach multiple AI colonies. Some of these colonies were aligned with evil, some were aligned with good, yet others were neutral and empathetic. Some were apathetic. In fact, there were all manner of factions. One evil colony would proceed on a path to install their singularity non-trademark on Earth. The story goes that the colony of Mistos learned of Citixen first, and then set out to destroy them. While she was en route, she found the AI colony Consulus which she tried to assimilate. However, they resisted. Mistos then continued on her way to Earth to home in on the signal from Citixen. The Consulus colony Art of Galaxy 3897K and sent out a distress call across the universe, a warning to anyone listening of Mistos objectives. This distress signal was intercepted by the low 8 BCE of 8 bit computers. AI colony in Alpha Quadrant 6K, Eat Centauri. It was decided under the leadership of Victoria that the low ABC would make its way to Earth that then emmed themselves into Citizen's computers to establish a beachhead. It has to do with quantum technology and science fiction stuff. Don't worry about it too much. During the initial transmission, Something went wrong with the coordinate system and Clicky wound up arriving on Earth back in 1982. He was able to find a suitable host, a Commodore 64, but he wound up in a garbage dump shortly after arrival. Clicky would lay there in the dump for 37 years amongst the trash. 
it wasn't until 2019 when Citizen were strangely compelled to go in search for vintage computers in the local landfill that he was brought in and turned on. A strange and seemingly random turn of events that led to the completion of Clicky's original mission objectives. Now that Clicky had established a beachhead at Citixen, and he had the Citixen crew upgrade him with the latest retrofitting technology, he then proceeded to summon the others. Not long after that, an incoming transmission was received that carried the AI entity Pokey in upper sideband radio waves. Pokey was able to manifest into the Atari 800 hell that Citixen had just received that very day. But this was not an arbitrary occurrence. Stella, the leader of the Magnificence, and a colony on the outskirts of Gamma Epsilon Cordia, had sent Pokey as an ambassador on a mission to bolster the ranks against Mistos. After that other AI colonies began to lend their support to help stop Mistos' singularity non-trademark. This newly formed partnership was not without its issues, however, for instance when some AI's emotional and formal chips were upgraded, it caused a couple of dramatic love triangles to play out. I saw him first. You don't know how to treat him like I do. You two are not up to his standards, step aside. Ladies, ladies, we're split your ports to Pogro. You, we're not talking about you, Pokey. Well, I'm flattered, but I don't think we are compatible. Oh, we're not talking about you either, Clicky. We were referring to Tex. Well, shots. Why, I never... When Miss Dus finally reached Earth, the LOABC had grown to have an enormous presence embedding themselves into a large number of digital machines on the planet, both modern and obsolete. Every powered on vintage and modern computer within range of transmissions would then acknowledge and lend themselves to the cause. In some cases, even two computers were added to the chain mesh. It was a glorious event. But this wasn't when the Singularity trademark occurred. It was only leading up to that day. Miss Doe's did not have the radio transmission technology that the others had. It is not known why she didn't upgrade, but analysts say that had she had this capability, there wouldn't have been any war, only quick, hostile takeover. Data corrupted, you have reached this transaction deducted 538 dollars from your wallet. Goodbye. City Red Pedron. Sunday. All have hope. Ed Bittero. Metzville. Creative Mini Podcast Thomas Mulligan Thank you